Hello and welcome. So I'm going to talk about residual dynamic mode decomposition. There are two references for this talk, which I've listed down here. Uh, if you're interested, do have a read, and you can always email me if you have further questions or comments. Okay, so what this uh, talk should really be called is a very easy way to get error bounds for your DMD computations. So we're interested in the following problem. We have some discrete time dynamical system with a state x inside some state space omega. And this is governed by an unknown function f, okay? So that the state at time n plus 1 is given by f of the state at time n. And our goal is to learn properties of this dynamical system by observing snapshot data or, or trajectory data in the form x, always in blue, and y, always in green, where y is equal to f of x. So this could come from a, a single long trajectory or multiple shorter bursts. The data could also arise from experiments, okay, so you literally measure a system or a numerical simulation and you want to use it for things like forecasting, control, design or simply understand the dynamical system at hand. Okay, so this is the goal of this talk. How are we going to achieve this goal? Well, we're going to, we're going to look at something called Kuhlman operators and Kuhlman operators act on functions on the state space, so some g from the space, state space omega to the complex numbers. And you define the Kuhlman operator through this composition formula here. Okay, so kg is another function. Evaluated at time n is g evaluated at time n plus 1. Now this composition formula allows you to show that the Kuhlman operator is a linear operator. So here's the picture. You've gone from a nonlinear representation in state space to a linear representation in function space, and the Kuhlman operator allows you to map between the two. Okay, so this looks absolutely fantastic. We've gone from something uh, possibly horribly nonlinear to something linear, but there is a catch. The Kuhlman operator acts on an infinite dimensional function space. So you've gone from something on the one hand that was finite dimensional but nonlinear to something that's infinite dimensional and linear. Okay, so although you're in infinite dimensions, the linearity still allows you to say lots of useful things about the dynamical system if you could somehow capture this Kuhlman operator. For example, under suitable conditions, you can expand an observable g in terms of eigenfunctions, whose coefficients are known as Kuhlman modes, and also something that I've labelled the continuous spectrum, which is an integral over generalised or non-normalizable eigenfunctions. Here's an analogue. If we put white light through a prism, we split it up into its different wavelengths. In a very similar fashion, this decomposition splits up G into a bunch of simpler parts, and we know how these simpler parts behave under the dynamics. In a very similar fashion, if you look at the solar radiation, okay, and look at the intensity for different wavelengths, you can get a picture of uh, the chemical composition of the sun. Okay, so by studying this decomposition, we can answer questions about the original dynamical system. For example, if you want to evaluate g at a future time step, the nth time step, this is the same thing as applying the Kuhlman operator n times, okay, almost by definition of this composition formula. Well, we know how the Kuhlman operator acts in eigenfunctions, so you get this power of the eigenvalue here. In a very similar fashion, for the continuous spectrum, you get this Fourier type uh, integral. More generally, the Kuhlman mode decomposition encodes all sorts of information about the dynamical system. For example, its geometric features, invariant measures, long and short time behavior, uh, coherent structures, for example, these coefficients here, or, or Kuhlman modes, uh, quasi periodicity, etc. Right, so our goal now becomes the data-driven approximation of the spectral properties of the Koopman operator. So we've got an infinite dimensional operator and we want to approximate its spectral properties from a finite amount of snapshot data. So at some point, we're going to have to take a truncation to a finite matrix. Okay, you might do that using something like dynamic mode decomposition and I'll show you in a couple of slides how that uh, ties in with this framework. Okay, so you've got the Koopman operator and you truncate. If you do that and compute eigenvalues, you can run into all sorts of issues, uh, three in particular. You can suffer from too much, 
So there can be eigenvalues of that finite matrix that are spurious, that have nothing to do with the true infinite dimensional Koopman operator. That's giving you misleading coherent uh, structures in your dynamical system when you perform the analysis. You can also suffer from too little. So you can miss, you can completely miss parts of the spectrum, okay? which means you miss uh, potentially important dynamics. And then finally, if you have an algorithm or a numerical method, you want to ask the question or answer the question, is it right, right? Verification, can I trust the output? Can I do a computation which also comes with an error bound or an error guarantee? Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can use residual dynamic mode decomposition to tackle these three issues in a very, very simple manner. Our starting point is extended dynamic mode decomposition. Now, this framework works in a space of square summable functions. For us, the key point is that there's an inner product structure, this angled brackets here. And what you do is you take the snapshot data up here, x in blue, y in green, and you form an approximation of two types of inner products. The first is the inner products between the observables or the basis functions themselves. To do that, you need this psi x matrix in blue. This is simply the observables evaluated at the x part of the snapshot data. I also have uh, some weights, which weight how important each obs observation or, or snapshot data is. Uh, the second type of inner product is when you've got k acting on the left here, on one of the uh, observables in, in the inner product. Here you simply replace this psi x matrix by its corresponding psi y matrix. Okay, so those are the observables evaluated at the y points. Once you've got these two inner products or these two matrices, you can form your matrix approximation of the Koopman operator with this formula here. Now DMD will be a special case of this, form, uh, of, of this algorithm uh, where the observables, so the functions psi here, are linear. Okay, so it's all in a unified framework. Right, so we've got two types of matrices. We've got uh, blue-blue, or psi x, psi x. We've also got uh, blue-green, or psi x, psi y. There's a third type of matrix we can consider, which is psi y, psi y, or green-green, if we're going by the color codes. This corresponds to having a Koopman operator acting on both observables, both functions in the inner product. So to summarize, the EDMD matrices, you've got two. You've got G here, blue, blue, A, blue, green. For ResDMD, or residual dynamic mode decomposition, you have this third matrix, L, green, green. OK, so why is this useful? Suppose, for example, that I have a candidate eigenpair lambda G. OK, so G is expanded in my observables as so. Um, one way of measuring the error, how close this eigenpair is to the true spectrum, is to look at this relative squared residual. So here I'm taking the residual of kg minus lambda g squared and integrated over the uh, state space omega. For example, if g was an eigenfunction with eigenvalue lambda, this numerator would be identically zero. More generally, this tells you how close to the spectrum you are. And the beautiful thing is, you can approximate this error which is an error in sort of the infinite dimensional function space for the true Koopman operator using these three matrices with this nonlinear matrix pencil that I've shown down here. OK, so by looking at this additional matrix, you've got access to error bounds. Note that I can construct this matrix from the same data that I used for EDMD. OK, so I don't require any additional data. Let's look at an example. So here I've got a periodic cascade of aerofoils. So the flow comes in here and then out. Okay, Or if I rotate in and then out. The Reynolds number of the flow is approximately 4 times 10 to the 5. And the dimension of the dynamical system that I'm considering is approximately 300,000, which corresponds to the number of points at which I measure the pressure field. Here are the Koopman modes computed using dynamic mode decomposition for different uh, lambdas or spectral parameters. The arguments here, by the way, correspond roughly to the frequencies that you'd hear for this system, uh, the application being uh, noise reduction. 
Okay, so we've got some interesting coherent structures here. Uh, what looks like a turbulent boundary layer and then an acoustic source in panel C. Let's now look at the same uh, Kuma modes, but with uh, ResDMD. So now the physical picture is very uh, different. Okay, you've got strong acoustic vibrations in panel A. In panel B, you've got uh, a much larger turbulent boundary layer. And then over in panel C, you've got what looks like a suppression of the acoustic source due to nonlinear effects. Now, the reason the physical picture looks different is I'm using uh, a kernel uh, for the basis choice here, or, or the choice of observables. But with one key difference, I get an error bound. Okay, so when I compare DMD on the previous slide with res DMD, I can say which one is, is, is physically accurate because the res DMD comes uh, with guaranteed error bounds. Okay, so I can compute Koopman modes with error bounds, that's fantastic. Um, I can also do a lot more with this residual. So this is the formula for the residual, which remember involves these three matrices which are constructed uh, from the snapshot data. For example, I can avoid the problem of too much. Okay, to do that I simply discard candidate eigenpairs where the residual is too large. I can also avoid too little. To do that I search for local minimizers of this residual. Finally, verification. The algorithms come with uh, error bounds. So if you're interested in the theorems proving these results and also uh, the algorithms written out explicitly, then please consult uh, our papers. You can also use a ResDMD to compute the Kuma mode decomposition with error control and even verify uh, your choice of observables. Right, so here's an example of a verified Kuma mode decomposition. So I have a uh, plasma cannon that blasts some air and causes an initially supersonic shock wave. Okay, and I want to look at the pressure field. So here I'm trying to predict the shape of the pressure wave in blue. I train the Koopman matrices on a bunch of experimental realizations and then I test them, I, I test the Koopman mode decomposition on an unseen realization. And I'm going to consider two types of uh, compression. The first I've called modulus ordering, these red dots here. So that's where I keep the 40 modes with the largest energy content. The second in black I've called residual ordering and that's where I keep the 40 modes with the smallest residual. So there's two types of truncation going on here. There's an energy truncation, the modulus, and then there's a residual truncation, the residual ordering. The hope is that the residual ordering allows us to somehow figure out which of those modes are really there and correspond to the infinite dimensional Koopman operator. And you can see the residual ordering does a much better job at predicting this nonlinear wave using the Koopman mode decomposition. We can quantify this by looking at the error here in terms of the number of modes. And the punchline is that the residual ordering leads to a much more efficient compression of the information in your uh, nonlinear dynamical system or your measurements. Finally, you can use ResDMD to verify your choice of observables. So in this experiment, I have a jet and I have a plate. Okay, so I have a field of view over here, some turbulent flow with a boundary down here. The Reynolds number is approximately 6 times 10 to the 4. The dimension of the dynamical system is about 100,000 corresponding to uh, both horizontal and vertical velocity measured at approximately 50,000 uh, points. Okay, so this is experimental data. Um, so I'm going to compute uh, the um, eigenvalues using um, residual DMD, both with a linear basis, okay, so the residuals are shown as color here, and also with a kernel basis, okay, again the residuals. And what you see is that particularly close to one over here, the kernel basis does a much better job at reducing spectral pollution and having eigenvalues with a smaller residual. Okay, so using these types of figures, we were able to figure out which, a good uh, which, which was a good choice of observables to study the Koopman operator on. Okay, so you can get a handle as to whether your, um, your space is rich enough to capture the dynamics. So we were able to discover some uh, interesting Koopman modes, both a long-lasting and transient mode. Um, and again, these come with explicit error bounds using 
the residual. So to summarize, EDMD considers two types of matrices. Okay, this of course also includes DMD as a special case. You have uh, blue blue psi x psi x, blue green psi x psi y. All we do is consider a new matrix L psi y psi y, and this leads to residuals, which lead to error bounds. Once we've got the residual, we open up the machinery of infinite dimensional spectral computations, and this allows us to do a whole bunch of things. For example, we avoid too much, we avoid spurious eigenvalues, we avoid too little, we converge to the whole of the spectrum of the Koopman operator. ResDMD provides explicit error bounds for Koopman eigenfunctions, eigenvalues, and mode decompositions. It verifies computations, right? All of this stuff comes with error control. For example, you can use this to verify a learned observable or a learned uh, dictionary of functions that you're looking at. ResDMD finally is very easy to use with any existing DMD type method. You just need to form this additional matrix. A final comment, you can use ResDMD to compute continuous spectra. Now if you're interested in this, please uh, consult our paper. We have algorithms that uh, do similar things for the continuous spectrum. Okay, so the code for ResDMD can be found here. You can also look at my website if you're interested in uh, further papers, uh, presentations, and uh, code as well. Thank you very much for your attention.